Uh-oh, what is going on guys? It is Mask Man here, and welcome back to the weekly rant thing. Oh my god, I've already fucked up my truck a little bit. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're off to a great start, aren't we? Yeah, welcome back to the thing where I play American Truck Simulator every week and talk about things going on in the world today. And that thing I figured I would talk about is uh, the topical Larry Nassar stuff going on. Um. For those of you that don't know, I mean, if you clicked on the video, you probably know, but for the quick crash course, those of you that don't know, if you're just a subscriber of mine that doesn't know what this is, uh, Larry Nassar was a doctor for the Olympics, pretty much. And I think he was also for a Michigan college or maybe worked through them. Uh, but pretty much, he was a doctor for people that were in the Olympics, especially children. And he got in trouble because uh, it turns out that he did very inappropriate things to those children. Uh, in fact, the amount of people overall that have come forward so far as when I'm recording this is 265 women have come forward. The youngest being the age of six years old when the occurrence happened had instances where this thing, I'm not going to call him a man because he's a horrible person, this thing did very inappropriate things and it's just... It's horrendous what this guy did. And he's pretty much already been sentenced to life in prison. You know, he's just kind of going through court to get all of his official sentencing and then hear everything from a lot of the victims that are going through the court system. But, uh, this guy is, uh, is, is not... Oh, God, that's the wrong lane. Okay, I'll be right here. Whoops. So, this guy was in court, and, uh, there was, this happened, well, I'm recording this, today is when it happened, on Friday when the whole court incident happened. One of the fathers of three daughters who were under him, uh, Randall Margraves was the name of the father. Uh, he was in court, and apparently he heard for the first time about the fact that some of these instances, in fact, ones that happened to a couple of his daughters, happened while he was in the room. If you don't know how that works, apparently there was a divider that was in between him and the child and then the parents so they couldn't see what was going on and uh, he would do bad things and he'd do it under the ruse that you know because they were young and they didn't know what was going on and they were impressionable he pretty much would is there a cop behind me? there is isn't there that's why I got a speeding violation I didn't realize I was speeding I'm just gonna going down through the road but, you know, he would do any appropriate things and say oh I'm doing what I need to heal you you know this will make you feel better this will make your muscles help and he did very inappropriate things when the father had heard apparently for the first time in the court from his daughter's little testimony that he was doing this while he was in the room he didn't like that and so the video starts from him pretty much saying you know if I can have a word with the judge and jury and he said you know as part of your sentence I want you to grant me five minutes in a locked room with this demon. And there are a lot of people in the room that laugh. They're like, ha ha, look, it's a it's a it's an upset father, the typical stereotypical, oh, I'm I'm the tough old dad. You know, people are laughing. But when I watch it when you watch it after knowing what happens, you realize this guy is completely serious. He wants time with this man to give him a piece of his mind. About peace of my mind, I mean a piece of his fist. He wants to just straight up murder that boy. And the judge says, you know, I, I, you, I, I can't do that. That's not part of how this works. And the guy says, can you give me one minute with him then? And the people in the room start laughing again a little bit. And she says, no, sir. And the guy says, okay, then I'm going to do it myself right here. And he lunges at that man. And he almost got him if it wasn't for uh, Nassar's attorney and then three uh three officers that were in the room pulling him back tackling him down locking him up and you know it was a bit of a scene it was a, i just realized the job is 380 miles i thought i picked one that was going to be short and sweet with the job here anyways everyone in the room is kind of like holy shit that just happened in a bad way uh i feel bad for his daughters and family having to see how he reacted like that and obviously you know part of you says you shouldn't act like that for many legal reasons, but when you think about it, I honestly can't blame this man for what he did, because I think most of us can say if we were in his shoes, you know, I don't have a child or anything like that. As of, as of right now, you know, I don't have a child, you know, I'm not expecting one yet, 
Uh, maybe sometime down the road I will. But I can only imagine being in his shoes, having three daughters, and all of them were just desecrated by this man in inappropriate ways, abused, and hundreds of other people, a couple hundred other, other victims, felt the same thing your daughters did. I, if I was in that situation, you know, I can't blame him. I probably would have done the same fucking thing. I would have been so mad. So, I'm, I'm not one of those where it's, go where, where it's like, I mean, I understand how it's like, man, I wish those officers were just like a little late. And I totally understand that. But, you know, it's their job. They can't have a bias. It's, it's how it's done. I know that the thing the police is known for nowadays for the past few years is, you know, having a bias towards certain kinds of people. But, you know, for a good officer, you can't have a bias. No matter who it is, no matter how old they are, no matter where they're from or what they've done, you can't have a bias towards anyone. You have to follow what you do by the book of your rules of your job inscription and by law. So, obviously, you know, as much as I'm sure those officers just wanted that man to get what he deserves and know he's going to eventually, they couldn't just let the father you know, go ahead and attack him. Even though, by God, it's what he deserves. I mean, life in prison is too good for that man. Like, this is a heavy case of sexual assault. Like, over 250 people have been... Oh, oh fucking way station. Oh, I can bypass it. Okay, that scared the shit out of me. But over 250 people have been affected by this man. Over his, over his career in the Olympic Committee. That is astronomical. I don't know if I know any case that has been that bad, but there hasn't really been someone that has access to that many young people like that. I mean, obviously you got children's doctors, but you know, it's just been, oh God, everyone's slowing down. Okay, we're at this part of the road now. Like this is one hell of a sexual abuse case. Like having over 200 people, that's, that's unbelievable. And this man, I don't want to call him a man. I forgot I said that earlier. I'm just going to call him a thing, a demon, a monster. I, I'm going 30 miles an hour and I still got a speeding ticket. Holy shit. I can't believe it. God damn it. I, man, I'm only going to get paid $8,000 for this job. I thought instead of picking it by, I usually pick these jobs by uh, the price per mile. But uh, I just went by distance because I wanted to try and not go too far. Apparently, I still picked one that's pretty fucking long. So I got that going for me, which is nice. But this guy, once again, don't want to call him guy. Don't want to give him the dignity of being called a man because he's not a man. He's everything but what a man is. He is a horrible, worthless piece of shit sack of flesh. I'm not even going to call him a human being because he is just a monster for what he's done. And, you know, he's going to get what he deserves. Because there's one thing that is uh, well known about the American prison institution. It's that you have some, you can have some hard criminals in the prison system. Some, some horrible people that have done horrible things. But there is nothing worse in the American prison system, probably more prison systems throughout the world, than someone that has harmed a child. If you're a child molester, if you've murdered a child, anything like that, people will fucking hate your guts. You know, there can be a guy that was in a gang and murdered 12 people just because they're part of another gang. If he sees Nasser walk in the door, or even just someone that molested one child, oh, they're about to get their ass taught a lesson. Because that's just the way it works. So, number one, as soon as Nasser walks into the prison system, He's going to have a lot of enemies the moment he walks in that door. And he'll be lucky if he survives a year if he doesn't kill himself. I think one thing you notice is that with a lot of cases of people like this, where you've got a man who's done this kind of thing and they're pretty much sentenced to guaranteed, like, there's no getting out of this. The amount of his sentencing so far, like 140 years, you know, there's no getting out of that. There, there's no early release on that, especially at his age. He's stuck in prison for life. No ifs, ands, or buts. And 
I mean, it's just... He's the kind of person where probably the chances are... Why would you want to spend the rest of your life in prison... Being abused by all these people that really hate your guts as deserved... And chances are... Like a lot of other people have done before in his position... He'll just take his life himself. I mean, maybe they'll give him watch for a long time to make sure that he doesn't do anything like that. I don't know. It's one of those situations where, just like uh, earlier this week, uh, the one guy from Glee, I didn't care from that, for that show at all, but the one guy from Glee that was about to face charges for uh, child pornography possession, uh, he killed himself earlier this week. Uh, before even really entering prison or anything like that, he just did it before sentencing. And it's like, there are a lot of people that like good riddance. But there's a lot of people that have this thought process, like me, of... I don't want to glorify suicide in any way. Because suicide is not a good thing. Obviously, I mean, when you have... You know, I think when I read the thing, it was like, either 5,000 or 50,000... Uh accounts of child pornography in possession which is a substantial amount that's not like a small accident that's like that's your thing buddy that's that's a lot and so once again that's the kind of person that is at that time you know maybe when he was doing glee or something he was a better guy but as of you know that moment that's not a good thing that's not a defendable thing and that's just not a good guy but I'm not going to glorify suicide and being like, thank God he killed himself. Because suicide is already enough of a taboo thing. And it happening to bad people is that gray area of where, like, you know, they essentially got punishment. But it was doing this thing that's already on such a tight wire in our world. You know, suicide is... A crazy, horrible epidemic that we have to deal with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. There are tons of accounts of suicide and attempted suicide happening daily. And it's a big problem that we want to try and fix. But then we have these instances where we glorify and then tell these people. It's like, thank God these horrible people killed themselves. It's like, let's not go that far yet. Because then we're just adding to the light of suicide and giving it more credit than we should ever give to some people. You know, it's a horrible gray area when bad people commit suicide. And it's like, as much as we can all wish that Larry Nassar gets a death penalty, but it won't happen for him just because I'm pretty sure that where he's being sentenced is happening in a state where he can't get the death penalty. And it's like, you just kind of wish a horrible thing to happen. And suicide would be the answer to that, you know, in a way. It's like, hey, he's gone. But once again, we don't want to glorify that kind of thing. So it's, it's a weird gray area of, you know, will suffering life in prison be good enough? Have him on constant watch so that he can't kill himself and just hope that he goes for the next 40 years just being treated shittily in prison? Like, here's hoping that, you know, before anything happens, just, oh, uh, God. I mean, chances are, I, I don't mean to make a dark ju dark humor joke, but I'm the kind of guy that I, I've always coped with horrible things with dark humor. It's just the kind of guy I am. Uh, let's just say that, let's hope that in prison, uh, he gets an eye for an eye. I'll, I'll, I'll put it at that. I mean, obviously, you know, there's no younger people in prison that can do it to him, and that would just be like a horrible situation on its own. But uh, here's hoping that there's some guys in prison that want to show them what it's like when you uh, take advantage of someone and their body in that kind of way. I guess that's kind of the best thing we can hope for for him. Once again, I'm not going to say, like, just kind of like suicide. Rape is a horrible thing, and it's kind of also a bad thing to kind of hope for that to happen because, once again, in a culture that is so tainted by rape and sex abuse and like the case is, you know, we don't want to glorify it in any way, but this guy is just a monster. Like I said, he's not a guy. He's not a man. He's not a human. 
He's just a rotten waste of flesh and life on this planet. And we just have to hope that he gets what's coming to him. That's about all I gotta say, so I've gotta try and find a place to, uh... Usually when I've got too long of a road trip, I pull off on the side of the road.